Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Hello and welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thank you for joining us and please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you do around here and don't forget to hit the bell icon for alerts of new content. And remember, all these things take a couple of seconds of your time. They're free of charge to you and they help to grow the channel from its current subscribers as I speak of 1,255. And we thank you very much indeed. For your support in this matter um, and the most important thing as well is really we want your comments in the section below joining me today james how are you sir i've uh, been better mate been better <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i'm saying uh, yeah. but we, we we've got to keep the faith we're clever yeah. for those of you that, that that aren't aware and i'm sure most of you are, are quite aware of who james is james has got his own youtube channel uh e20 zone tv well before we get stuck into the meat of this particular topic why don't you give your, your channel a shout out james uh yeah opinionated passionate um flamboyant e20 zone tv uh come over check us out if you like what we do subscribe if you don't we're, we're all claret and blue ladies and gentlemen yeah. and that's what we all are do you know what yeah. We're one dysfunctional family. We argue, we fight, and at the end of it, we all want West Ham to win. So, yeah, what's not to like? So, give James a sub if you haven't already. Um, look, I mean, you've all seen, I'm sure, the, the thumbnail that I put. It's quite dramatic. I've I've badged it up as civil war. Um, whether it's that or not, I don't know. But something strange is going on, James and, and dear viewers. Something strange is going on behind the scenes. Here's the thing, right? I look, as a casual observer, as a season ticket holder, I'm not an in-the-know, but I look and go, there's a few things that don't add up here. For instance, we obviously got in the, the manager, the head coach, Le Petigui. We had a, a technical director already in situ, of, namely Tim Stighton. I don't know how much input Tim Stighton had in getting... The, the head coach through the door and the reason I say that is because it's David Sullivan it, this has that appointment has his fingerprints all over it um in that he was out of contract he is so he's not got to pay any compensation um I'm led to understand and I don't know if this is accurate or not that there is a connection with Will Salthouse and obviously we know that that Will Salthouse is one of his David Sullivan's favored agents so if if that is correct then that would make sense um you then look at other things james as well and and things like luis guillerme 20 odd million pound signing he's not played a singular minute of first team action he's there's been several occasions where he's not even been on the bench um chelsea being one prime example but that's not the only example Jean-Claire Tadebo, a player that we chased and chased and chased, and at this precise moment in time has got seven minutes of Premier League football under his belt. The, the most he's played in any one game was the game against Bournemouth in the League Cup. Um, Nicholas Fulkrug, who I know is currently injured, but again, he's played 63 minutes of Premier League action over three squads that he was involved in. Um, the results are, are, are something of a concern. All these things coming together. And I just think that something's going on behind the scenes, James. I don't know what. Is it a civil war? Is that a little bit overblown? I don't know. Give me your thoughts. Um, Lewis Guillermo is a strange one. Like, are West Ham capable of going and signing a £20 million player that we're, that we're not going to play? Uh, I don't think we are. I, I really don't. Not when we need other prime targets in key positions. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, when I look at this Guillermo, I think he's a young, up-and-coming talent, but do we need him right now? 
And the answer to that is no. I, I don't think we do need a young up and coming talent. I think we need a centre forward who's going to be a, a long serving centre forward. I think we need a, a midfielder, a box to box technical midfielder, someone who can pick the ball up, turn and be that sort of dynamic midfielder. We have neither at the minute. Do you know what I'm saying? So, Luis Guillermo, um, I understand the frustration on that one. Yeah, you, you, well, he was the second signing after League One Wes. And when you bring him in and you're basically saying, well, right, this is like a shiny new up and coming talent. Well, we expect to see him in, in at least a cup game, at least to come on and do something and to not play in under 23s and not to play in the Premier League or any sort of cup competition. I think it's uh, pretty criminal, mate, if I'm being honest. I feel I feel for him to a point. If that is the case, why don't you just loan him out for a season? Loan him out to a championship side or, or a foreign side for a year let him get climatised to European football and then go from there. So that's that on Lewis Guillermo. Uh, Nicholas Forkrug, for me, should have been starting for, at the start of the season. He's a German international. He scores goals wherever he goes. Um, these I keep hearing this buzzword of uh, bedding in and uh, like time to gel and all this crap. For me, he's a, he's a proven player. He's not... 22 he's 32 years of age coming up to like he's he's been there seen it done it he don't need time do you know what i'm saying so he's injured obviously when he gets back it once he's fit chuck him in and, and play him from the start um to debo frustrates the life out of me because i do not understand that maver panos gets away with murder literal murder in games and continuously plays for some reason um if Sadebo is not fit. Why is he not fit? Right, it's now September, like the twenty third, basically, when this video will come out. Yeah. For me, I look at it. Why is he not fit? Like, if he's not fit, but then he plays against Liverpool on Wednesday night, then basically people will. Uh, he, he is fit, but he's just not getting picked. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And the, the problem is, I actually feel sorry for, for Sadebo because if he goes to Anfield on Wednesday night, starts in West Ham's back nine and we get obliterated by Liverpool, then people are going to say, well, look at him, he, he, ain't, he ain't ready. But he's not ready because you're playing him against games, really, where he's getting destroyed in games. Do you know what I'm saying? He's not really getting any m momentum. Yeah. But that all falls on Lopetegui to a point. Um, I think he wanted Max Kielman. He got what he wanted with him. Do you know what I'm saying? He he got other players in there, like your yes, Somervilles, etc. I think a lot of this is on... Lopetegui's style of play where he just doesn't know his best style to a point, if I'm being honest. Mm. Yeah. I, I, here's the thing for me where I sort of look at it and think that there might be a little bit of a a battle between the, the two protagonists that I've got on the thumbnail. Um, I sort of look at Tadebo as, as the real one that's, that's that makes me think this. So he's obviously come in. Um, my understanding is that Tim wanted this guy in, like, desperately. He wanted this guy in at all costs. Now, I know, obviously, you can go back and look at, on the West Ham webpage and, and see a, a little puff piece that sort of, like, is quoting Julien Lepetegui saying what a wonderful signing he is. Well, of course he's going to say that on the club official website. He's not going to turn around and say, well, we've signed a real dud here, haven't we? He's, he's going to sort of, like, blow smoke up his ass. But in, the reality is is he's had plenty of opportunities to play him. He, was he in the squad against um, Aston Villa? Yes, he was. He got five minutes off the bench. Was he in the squad against Crystal Palace? Yes, he was. He got two minutes off the bench. He was in the squads for Man City, Fulham and Chelsea. Didn't step on the pitch. The one time he started a, a game was the EFL Cup game against Bournemouth. He got hooked at halftime. Did he Did he look like Prime's Fra Franz Beckenbauer? No, he didn't. But let's be honest, he played seven minutes up to that point. He hadn't had much of a preseason. Of course, he's going to look a little bit rusty. What were you expecting? Um, and I just sort of think to myself, well, from what I understand, James, this the signing obviously is a loan with a conditional obligation to buy. Now, my understanding, rightly or wrongly, is that the conditions are Tadebo has to make five Premier League starts and that becomes uh, that obligation becomes set in stone. Is it? This is me just asking a question. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying, is it? Is it possible that the head coach is looking and going, I really don't fancy this player. And assuming that I'm still here next season, 
I really don't think that that's a player I want hanging around. So very easy way of doing that is, OK, if I have to play him in five Premier League games, if I have to start him in five Premier League games, I'm just going to make sure I don't start him in five Premier League games. And then I haven't got to worry about him next season. Am I being mischievous there or do you think that's possible? Um, I don't know. I don't know because I don't understand that Memphis Panos is continuously no, starting. Like, yeah, do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? If if Memphis Panos was putting in really good performances, I could I could understand what you were saying. But when Mav has been dreadful, he has mm-hmm. been dreadful so far this season. He's given away goals. He gave away, gave away goals against Chelsea. He was at fault for the goal against Fulham away. For me. I don't understand what Tadebo's got to do to get in this side when the back line's all over the place. Now, that's what makes me sort of ask the question, James. You, you're right. Mm-hmm. He's had two games on the bounce where he has looked anywhere between poor and shocking. And still, Tadebo didn't get a singular minute either against Fulham or Chelsea. And as I say, that's just what makes me ask the question. Is this the head coach rebelling against a signing that clearly was made by the technical director? I honestly don't know, mate. But one thing I will say on it is that we have got Liverpool, Brentford, Ipswich for another international break. If he goes into an international break, he doesn't start any of them games, i.e. Premier League games, and we come back and then we face Spurs and he still isn't starting, I think your uh, what you're saying could be accurate to a point because it, you, you'd have to ask yourself questions. It would be mid-October then mm. when we come back, right? And he's been here for a good few months I don't think a player that's being chased by Juventus, Manchester United needs that much time to sort of climatise to the Premier League. I really don't. And if Maverick Panos is putting in bang average performances or very bad performances, um, I don't understand why he's not being taken out of the firing line, Mav, for the sake of his West Ham career and allowing Tadebo to come in. Because I think Tadebo is a very, very good player. Extremely good. And how is he supposed to build a relationship up as like the first choice partnership with him and Kilman? If he's sitting on the bench, yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that one, Rob. But if it is a battle in there between players, because it it doesn't look good, does it? Let's be honest. Like the Guillermo not uh, being involved and Tadebo nowhere to be seen, really. Yeah, the questions will need to be asked on why they're not being given the opportunity. Yeah, I, th- I think you 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 make a very good point. Is that if we get to that Spurs game and you're still looking at Debo not having started a game in the Premier League, and, and as I say, if what I'm led to understand is correct, and like I say, it's just something I've heard. I'm not an in the know, so it could be incorrect. So if it is fine, not a problem. But as I say, my understanding is once he has started five Premier League games for West Ham that loan, effectively, we are obligated to buy him at the end of the season. And I'm just looking and thinking, he hasn't started a game yet, not in the Premier League. So, and and Mav has put in two shocking performances. Um, so, he, he, for, for my way of thinking, well, surely, surely, he should have played against Chelsea on the back of the Fulham game. And instead of doing that, not only did Mavropanos start, but he ended up playing a third centre-back that was actually a player that had never played, never started a game to the best of my knowledge in that position for us in Edson Alvarez, um, mm. who was totally exposed by Nicholas Jackson for the, in, in the opening stages of the game. Not his fault. It was the tactics that the manager employed. He would rather put Edson Alvarez as the third centre-back rather than drafting in Jean-Claire Tadebo and playing him in his favoured position. And that's just what makes me think Something isn't right here, James. Something doesn't add up. Mm. Um, I think with the Lopetegui thing, it's questions need to be asked, really. Like, who, who who was the person who brought him to the club? Now, this is what I believe with Lopetegui. I believe that Lopetegui was signed by Sullivan. Yeah, and only, only Sullivan. Um, I remember speaking to traders in the betting community back in December, mid- middle of December, and there was whispers of Lopetegui being mentioned uh, as West Ham's next manager. He was a free agent. Uh, he had le- just left uh, Wolves like previous at the start of the last season. So he was lurking about the Premier League and wanted another crack at it. Um, when I see 
our technical director doing interviews and saying he he ticks all the boxes. I don't believe he does, and I I, I say it with heart on that. I believe that Sullivan picked him. Sullivan was the one who who approached him, because as the old saying goes, Sullivan doesn't buy no one out of a contract. He's too old fashioned for that. He 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 likes people that are a free agent, and basically he looks at that he's wasting money on a player on or or a manager buying him out of his contract. Do you know what I'm saying? When you can get a man for free, yeah? I can understand it. Don't agree with it, but I can understand what that, uh, the way he's gone around it. And this is what we're being served up at the minute. We're being served up a with a manager that is a bit... I don't know what... He, I, I, I honestly don't know what he's doing. And I, I don't get where he's going. I don't get what the style of play he's trying to do. Um, he's trying to do three things at once. We're, we're, we're playing four three three, and then we're playing three five two or or three four three uh, when we're when we're out of possession, or well when we're in possession. Sorry, like it's it's just chaos. It's just chaos all over the park at the minute, and you're putting players in wrong positions. You're playing Kudus on the left when like you've got a left side of attacker with uh, Quasencio Somerville who come on and done really well against Chelsea. And play from the start. Um, I, I calling for him to be sacked right now is strong, but I think if you give him, I don't think he lasts this side of twenty twenty four. I think I think it's going to get to a stage where he's just going to it's just going to self implode, mate. Because what I'm the, my attitude is, I look at Brighton. They've they've just got a new manager, a young up and coming manager, 31, 32 years old, I think he is. Yeah. He he was in Germany. They've started off like a train. Um they are if, I, if memory serves me right, they're unbeaten currently right now. And for me, I look at them and I look at us and it's night and day. It's just mm-hmm. night and day, Rob. Like like where where's the manager bounce? Where's this sort of where's and you you You've watched football for a long time, Rob, yeah. like me, yeah? And you can see it when the team is vibing to a point. Yeah. And someone put it in on yeah. my on my stream yesterday. Yeah, shout out to Lawrence all the way over in America. Uh, yeah, there really. is there is zero chemistry in, in, in the side. The, the, like there's, strangers. It's like It's like me and you being the manager and the assistant and picking 11 players to play for West Ham. Like and just going right, eleven people. Here you go, you go there, you go there, and that's it. There's, there's... it's like we've gone out into Westfield and we've just got the first eleven people that we've seen and just gone. Yeah, here's a shirt. You know, you're playing in, yeah. 15, in five minutes. Yeah, and and honestly, mate, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll say it openly as I can. I do fear that this is where we drop like a stone in water there uh, for me, and I don't like it, but. I understand people saying about Moyes last season and everything. I get that argument, but I do think we have to humble ourselves and say, "Well, a minute, we are. We're not there. We're not at the top of the mountain yet. We are, but we're building our way up there." And I think with Lopetegui currently right now, I feel that we've got a man who's, who's only going to take us backwards and take us backwards fast. If I'm honest. So, in if there is some, as I put it, civil war that's going on between. Le Pettigree and Stuyton behind the scenes, you can only see one winner if that's the case. Yeah. Well, I think for me, when you're giving a man a two-year deal, where's the long-term vision there? Like, and I think we've all discussed, I think you discussed it on here. I mean, you've discussed it. I've definitely discussed it on E20. And I've turned around and I've said, if you're looking at a long-term project, you go and get a man for five years, yeah. like, Arsenal, like Arsenal did with Arteta. Now, yeah. I'm not going to compare Arsenal and Arteta to West Ham because it's night and day. Yeah. But what I'm but what I'm saying is if you believe in someone, you go and get that man and say, right, you are here for five years, the first seat, first 18 months, right, you've got to get out of the dead woods, you've got to build your own side. And then within that sort of two year, two years bracket, moving forward, I expect you to be competing at a top end. At the minute, we can't even compete to win a game of football in a minute. And that's worrying. I look at the two uh, um, games that, that we've got points. I've, I, I've said it on E20. Crystal Palace, I felt we got away with it to a point. I think, like, first half, we was lucky to get out of there not conceding. And the Fulham game papers over the cracks massively because we should have been done and dusted out of that game. And somehow we, we nick a point in the 94th minute. And people go, well, we've got a point. It's fine. But is it fine? 
or is it just that we got away with it on that day? Yeah, and we and we got a bit of luck. Like we can't rely on luck for the whole season because if that's the case, we're we're going to be fighting relegation. Like and I don't even like to say it. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't think West Ham will get relegated, but should West Ham be in that situation? Absolutely not. Not with the talent that we got. Any final thoughts before we knock it on the head, James? Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm nervous, Rob. I'll be, I'll be uh, truthfully honest. I am nervous about the, about the the upcoming games. I think the Liverpool game, we know what's going to happen. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. going to go there and it is what it is. Yeah, if we put out a result from there, it'd be unbelievable. Yeah. The Brentford and Ipswich games are two are two massive games for Lopetegui and I expect him to at least get four points, at least, right, for them two games. If he fails to beat Ipswich at home, in a, a side that's just come up, then we go into another international break and we're sitting there and we're wondering where's this going with him? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think you have to you have to support him, but I think the the, the support is wearing thin currently right now because we're not seeing we're not seeing nothing to give us any sort of hope. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, I think we've just got to lick our wounds on the Chelsea game. It's a horrible game to lose against them, and I think the next the next four games are massive: Liverpool in the cup. Uh, Brentford, Ipswich, and then we've got an international break, and then we've got Spurs at White Hart Lane at, on a half past twelve kickoff. And if we go to Spurs and we get destroyed there, then I, I feel the worst for him. I really do. Thank you very much, James, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk about this. I'm sure again down the track, um, guys. Please don't forget to get over to E20 Zone TV. Give uh, James a sub if you haven't already done so. He's doing some great things over there, and please also don't forget to like, comment on, and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here, and hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. Remember, all these things take a couple of seconds of your time. They're free of charge to you. They help to grow the channel from where it is at the moment into something bigger and better down the track. And we thank you very much indeed for your support. We're going to disappear. Talking of support, please don't forget to give your supports to the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity. We'll see you next time. Come on, you Irons. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on, you Irons. Oh, what is that?